Hey everyone, it's Christian here again, and this is going to be a video on request. We'll call it a VOR. Um, I was asked by a viewer to do a video comparing different uh, types of sables, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll uh, just go forewarning. I'm still recovering from the crash, so if I'm not seeing very well, let me know. I'm trying to get the, the vlogs out. Even though my my uh, my jaw still hurts quite a bit, so um, anyway, what we have in front of us here is uh, I'll do a separate vlog on. You know what? I'll just I can just go ahead and do a vlog on all of these. I might do a separate one on a couple of these, but in front of us here is Sable Miner, and you can see it's actually a mature plant. Um, that's a flower stalk coming out, uh, a flower bract, not a stalk. I mean, it is a stalk of sorts, but it's known as a, as a bract, and uh, that is a mature plant there. Uh, these are native anywhere from um, central, north central Florida through to, uh, I believe, east Texas, and all the way up into Georgia, possibly parts of South Carolina. There's a lot of guys in the southeastern palm world that would actually know the exact locations, but it's not native to this area. It's, it's it, north of here. But people still, it's still planted here quite a bit because uh, it is very resilient. It makes for good groundscaping. And uh, it's a nice plant. It's also native, it's a Florida native. So people, people plant it for native points. So to speak. you get to have a certain number of points to you know, properly landscape your yard according to the, uh, the city or the county. So um, it, it's going to be different than palmetto. If you can see that the leaves are not nearly as cost of palmetto. They're not as divided as uh as regular palmettos are uh and the lee it doesn't really get much of a trunk it can get a little bit of an unclear trunk some of the bigger ones especially out in louisiana they get to be real beefy but the ones here in florida tend to this is mature i've seen them literally be just three leaves with a, with a flower rack coming out so it really depends on what uh you know what what variety you're kind of looking at the 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 ones that come from higher rainfall areas tend to be bigger. And the ones from the little bit drier areas tend to be smaller, which is not, you know, which makes sense. That's the same way it is with palmettos. You'll see the real tall palmettos in the middle of the state where there's a lot more rain. Sorry, I may not have been totally on that there, but this is a very, it's extremely, it's gonna grow a lot like a palmetto will and have the same, uh, it, they actually grow mostly in shade where palmettos will tend to grow in sun and shade, but these tend to grow, um, in the understory of uh, a lot of swampy areas. And uh, they don't really see a whole lot of sun where palmettos will see both sun and shade depending on where they are located. Uh, but they'll take both. They don't like being transplanted at all. It's almost impossible to transplant a, a palm of the size without serious uh, planting and digging of quite a root ball. It can be done, it's just very tough and you can't just dig it up. So that goes for all sables. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's it'll they, they've been known to take down to uh, five degrees Fahrenheit with no protection and take some damage, but I mean, they can take quite a bit of cold. In fact, probably just a little bit more than a palmetto, from my best knowledge. I'm not a cold hardy expert, but I have looked at people's gardens from around the southeast, asked people, you know, asked questions, a little bit of extrapolation of data based on where the plant's from. Um, and where it has grown successfully. So uh, that's Sable Miner there. Um, so we'll make this little Sable extravaganza here. We can walk over and just take a little side step across the yard here. Not much of a side step, just a little walk. And here is a very cool, now this is a really cool agave. I wish I knew more about. This one is very white. It's extremely dangerous. Uh, that will go right through your rib cage. So, so a lot of people will grow these and they will uh, cut all of them off, which, you know, the sides off, which really, I mean, it, make, it makes sense, but it really kills the whole idea of, you know, the, the look of the plant. So, um, so we're going to go over here to uh, this here. This is Sable Palmetto Variation Lisa. And I think I did Sable Lisa as a, as a type. And... Um, it is basically a mutation of palmetto where it has very thick leathery leaflets. I don't know if I did this as a video, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it as kind of a extravaganza. These are very leathery, very thick. 
they're webbed. You can see they don't split like a palmetto does. You don't see any dro thing, anything drooping. Everything's real tough. And this one's starting to grow a, a little bit of a trunk. There's actually another one over here, kind of a juvenile. That would be the equivalent of probably three, uh, in Florida of a three gallon. So uh, this is kind of an, this is a nice little property that my friend down the road has. It's an extra lot that they expanded on, and uh, they love plants. So hence there's a lot of palms here. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna try and continue on getting a little bit of pain in my jaw there but this is going to have the same growing requirements as a palmetto uh just lots of uh water lots of sun will make it grow fast although they take shade they take some, some drought as well um just had this planned out where there's going to be more um sables that i don't think i can find uh here we go there's one more for us here and this is going to be sable domingensis now this one is nicer in the fact that it grows a lot. This is going to be native to Dumb and Gentis being native, native to the Dominican Republic uh, and the, or the island of Hispaniola, but more so the, the Dominican. And uh, this one grows actually really fast for a sable. It probably grows as fast as a Bismarckia does. Maybe not that fast, but when it, if a palmetto is like a 2 out of a 10 and a minor is maybe 3, this is probably closer to like a 6. Um on the on the well it's, it's like a 10 out of 10 on a sable scale but maybe a 6 out of 10 on a palm scale maybe a 5 but uh these get bigger leaves they grow faster they're gonna be more upright uh everything about it's just gonna be bigger it's gonna be like a like a giant version of a palmetto again they're all gonna all sables are gonna have the same uh climate requirements uh or cultivation requirements lots of water lots of heat Lots of sun, although they will also take shade. They will also take drought, but that's why they're so, you know, that everyone loves them in the, uh, in the, what's it called, the, the landscaping world because they are so uh, dynamic. So anyway, sorry, my <laughs> pain in my jaw is getting real bad. Let me see if I can't uh, get another sable in here. Now, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure this is what is known as... Uh, sable bermudana and if you see it has kind of a flatter round leaflet uh that kind of goes around it's not very folded like a palmetto would be and uh it will get a it will get a beefier stout trunk with a little bit of silver on it It'll, it's kind of distinguishable from a palmetto where a palmetto would have these leaves completely folded and they wouldn't look like a fan at all um and uh, the petioles are a little bit wider. Again, the same cultivation requirement. Uh, this it's a little bit silvery blue. This is definitely a. It, it's it's been a species. It's been knocked off of the species, and not just a variety of palmetto. I don't know what its current status is, but it is uh, desired amongst collectors. It has, it has a very cool look about it. It's very neat and tidy and stout. It was a little like I don't know how to best explain. It looks like a real rugged looking plant um probably because that's you know living in bermuda where it's windy all the time so um as far as sables in this yard that's going to be a little sable uh, bonanza so to speak um i will find i will go to another yard of a friend's uh and next week and i'll be able to do this like a part two so let's call this part one so we did minor we did um domingensis we did bermudana we did sable lisa so there's four there. I can probably get some of the bigger ones and better specimens. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll just go from there. That works. So before my uh, before my jaw falls off, I'll uh, go ahead and end it there. And um, tell me what you think of the lighting. I did this kind of in, there's a, there's a, there was a, a thunderstorm about it half an hour ago. And I figured why not come in while it's a little bit cooler. Maybe the lighting will be better. You know, maybe sometimes the glare kind of doesn't give you a good idea of what, the plant looks like when you're kind of just staring at it without having to shade your eyes. I'm not the best with light. I don't, you know, I don't, as I've mentioned before, I don't uh, stage these videos. I just kind of do them as I, as I go. I don't have any professional, um, any professional equipment. I'm just using a, a Canon power shot and uh, hoping for the best sound wise and video. Uh, another, 
So, anyway, I uh, hope you like this video. Um, if you if you like watching these palm videos, uh, go ahead and subscribe, and there'll be more coming out. And I, you know, I really hope to just try and get more people that, you know, like tropical plants, like into the idea of like collecting more palms. There's so many out there, and that's kind of like the mission of this video. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna think I'm gonna do a video on like the mission statement of the video of this, uh, of this uh, the channel. So, anyway, sorry, I'm, <laughs> my mind's half of my my jaw pain so I'm uh, I'm repeating myself I apologize I should probably be uh, probably should be uh, ending it faster than trying to reiterate things so any I'll leave it there thanks for watching hope you have a good weekend and I'll see you guys soon